from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Wednesday, August the 9th, 2023. We open with response to a report in the Wall Street Journal today on the potential of a normalization agreement between Israel and Saudi Arabia. The journal's article is titled, Saudis Agree with U.S. on Path to Normalize Kingdom's Ties with Israel, though the article also notes there are still many obstacles on this path. It said U.S. and Saudi officials have agreed on broad terms for a potential deal and that officials are negotiating the details, hoping to hammer it out within a year, citing an unnamed senior U.S. official saying that there's a work plan to explore the elements of what this would be and test the boundaries of what's possible. At the same time, the paper also cites Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman saying he is not ready to establish full ties with Israel. The Saudis' demands for such an agreement reportedly include Israel making some concessions or gestures to the Palestinians. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was asked by Bloomberg News earlier this week if that would hinder a potential deal. He answered, cited by the Times of Israel, saying, if there's political will, there will be a political way to achieve normalization and a formal peace between Israel and Saudi Arabia. I think there's enough room, he said, to discuss possibilities. And Israel's foreign minister, Eli Cohen, seemed to echo the sentiment, telling Arabic language site Elaf, the Palestinian issue will not be an obstacle to peace. Today, White House National Security Council spokesperson John Kirby was asked about the report in a phone briefing with reporters. The Times of Israel cited Kirby saying that the reporting has left some people with the impression that the discussions are farther along and closer to some sense of certainty than they actually are. He said President Biden has directed his top aides to see what was in the realm of the possible when it comes to pursuing Israeli-Saudi normalization and that there is a commitment by the administration to keep talking and to keep trying to move things forward. The Anti-Defamation League published a new report yesterday on how anti-Zionism is influencing the political left in some European countries and the possible impact on similar groups in the U.S. The report focuses on left-wing political organizations in France, Germany, Spain, and the U.K. ADL Senior Vice President of International Affairs Marina Rosenberg said while anti-Semitism from individuals associated with left-leaning political organizations is generally less violent than the threat of right-wing anti-Semitism, its increasing penetration into the political mainstream is deeply concerning. And she said there's no doubt that the anti-Zionist rhetoric and terminology popular in European left circles are increasingly being adopted and exploited by some in the U.S. political far left. Shurat Hadin Israel Law Center issued a letter of notice to Princeton University this week over the inclusion of a textbook in a humanities class being offered this fall at the school, which alleges that the IDF was intentionally maiming Palestinians and that the bodies of Palestinian children were, quote-unquote, mined for organs for scientific research. The author of the book, The Healing Humanities, The Right to Maim, Jasbir Puar, has made such accusations in the past. Wynet reports in a letter to University Dean Professor Jean Jarrett, Shurat Adin calls the textbook nothing more than a modern adaptation of anti-Semitic stereotypes, reviving and modernizing medieval accusations against Jews alleging that the propagation of such content can perpetuate harmful stereotypes, promote misinformation, and contribute to the marginalization of Jewish students and the broader Jewish community, saying it creates a hostile and dangerous education environment. Turning now to some sports, the European Athletics U-20 Under-20 Championships kicked off this week in Jerusalem, just ahead of the opening ceremony at the Givat Ram Stadium, Jerusalem Mayor Moshe Leon met with President of European Athletics Dubromir Karamarinov, telling him it is a great honor for the capital of Israel and I am proud to host you once again. 
you are welcome here for the future championships. Israel hosted the Under-18 Championships in 2022, but this is its first time hosting the Under-20. The competition began on Monday in a number of categories, including running, sprinting, hammer throw, and shot put. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Wednesday, August the 9th at 7 o'clock. It's Talmud study. At 8, Shachar Azani sits with leading Israeli academic, lawyer, and social activist Yuval al-Bashan about his work pushing for compromise on the proposed judicial overhaul. At 9, actress Ayala Zur is on L'Chaim. At 10, Mike Burston goes on a star-studded trip down memory lane with his longtime friend Julian Schlossberg. And coming up next, it's Thinking Out Loud. And that's the JBS News Update for Wednesday, August the 9th, 2023. I'm Tisha Bader. Stay healthy. Stay well.